Kwame, welcome to Case 19. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Now, you have an unusual nickname. You're known as the assassin because of your approach and your business model. Tell me about that and why you've chosen that model. Well, I think people like to think of short sellers as assassins in general because we're making bets against the price of a company coming down. Um, but me particularly, why I'm known as the assassin is because a lot of the work that I do is very targeted and very deep and done behind the scenes. Um, so usually markets are unaware of the type of research I'm conducting and the, the types of questions I'm asking as I'm investigating a company. And the hope is that as I continue to conduct that due diligence, I can in turn bring to light information that could pr pr prove fatal to companies that I believe are fundamentally flawed and broken. Does it make you feel pretty good when you are able to expose that? Of, it's what really motivates me. Short selling isn't an easy business, and if you're in this business simply to make money, short selling isn't the strategy you're going to be using, simply because the mathematics of short selling are always going to be against you. Uh, so you have to really be driven by the idea of understanding what's broken and motivated to expose that sort of um, those vulnerabilities in a company and better educate investors so they can be better stewards of, cap of their capital. This conference in itself is all about sort of innovation, transformation and disruption and, and that's something you, you seem to be quite comfortable with the idea of. What do you think are the biggest challenges facing this industry at the moment in terms of the tumultuous geopolitical environment we're in even? Well, it's, it's, I find it very amusing that we enter into a period of volatility where active managers should be doing well, but I think perhaps old strategies are simply not um, as successful as they used to be, the market environment is just simply so different, or there's almost like a complacency where we're 10 years into a bull market and money has been free, debt has been free. Uh, and as that thing, as that starts to change, I would expect active managers to do well, um, but that hasn't been the case. So for Softcat, we simply focus on what we're good at. Uh, we don't ever expand to, ever intend to expand the strategy. We'll be focused on short selling, um, high conviction short selling. And I believe that if you stick to what you're good at, you can battle whatever market environment you're up against. What is the industry grappling with generally in terms of transformation and adoption of new technology, say, or the use of machine learning, artificial intelligence? Well, we, we do our research the old-fashioned way, so perhaps that in and of itself is disruptive because we're up against funds that have billions of dollars under management that can use whatever expense to purchase all of that technology and all of that data. And as a short-selling fund, we can't really differentiate ourselves in the world of technology and data simply because we're not as well capitalized as, as a lot of those peers. Um, so for us, it's about returning to the good old fashioned way of investing and asking the questions that other investors are not and really accessing information that isn't readily available at my, my desk on the computer or on, or on a Bloomberg ter terminal. It's about going back into the world and meeting with individuals and, and understanding the context and the psychology and how decisions are being made and really getting the, the data that's hard to get where you, you have to actually use some shoe leather, <laughs> wear your shoes out in order to get that information. This, this sounds like music to the ears of those who are worried about the machines taking over to me. <laughs> well, at some point I'm sure that machine learning will get to a point where they, it can analyze a lot of the data that we're able to collect. But in the end, though I'm a mathematician and though I come from things at such an empirical way, what I realize is that really understanding companies and their future prospects, there's, there's an art to it. And it's, it really, I'm not sure if, if machines will ever be able to replicate the way that humans process and understand and, and intuit information. So you believe that at the, at the root of all this, there is still that very human connection and human relationship in finance that has to be there, the level of trust that has to be there. Yes, I, I'm not sure if machines will ever be able to understand trust in the way that we as humans are. Fami, what do you hope you impart to the audience that are here to hear you speak today? I would hope that they understand the value that short selling plays in the markets. And I think generally there's a negative sentiment against short sellers. Um, but really, we're, we're just another participant in the market. And in any, in any case, for investors who do go long, short sellers are providing a buying opportunity if you do have conviction in your company. Fami, thank you so much for sharing <laughs> your insights. You. Great to talk to you. Thank you.